This is the last coffee house. So today it's about Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, and she's talking about accounting. Now the article I have here is from the Daily Wire, and that's obviously a staunchly conservative publication. It's pretty good, staunchly conservative publication, but it has to be taken in that vein. I'm going to balance it out later with a, a Vox article, so <laughs> we'll see how they're looking at this because this, to me, is terrifying. It, it's shockingly bad. It's just remember the similar feelings I had when Sarah Palin was saying all sorts of goofy stuff, but I I. Feel I feel like this is worse, to be honest. So the, the article's titled, Okaji Cortez gets roasted after strikingly erroneous claim. What had happened was that The Nation had published an article wherein they stated, quote, in all, at least a mind-boggling 21 trillion of Pentagon financial transactions between 1998 and 2015 could not be traced, documented, or explained, concluded Skidmore, end quote. So this is from, I haven't read the source articles from some study, I'll take them at the word, that 21 trillion could not be traced, documented, or explained. Now, the tweet... So, Ocasio-Cortez tweeted, quote, 21 trillion in Pentagon financial transactions could not be traced, documented, or explained. 21 trillion in Pentagon accounting errors. Medicare for all costs 32 trillion. That means 66% of Medicare for all could have been funded already by the Pentagon. And that's before our premiums, end quote. So, this is, this is what's concerning. Obviously, everybody pointed out that, what's his name? Brian Rydell. He, he responds, in the original story, 21 trillion refers to transfers back and forth between accounts. So, the same one dollar can be counted thousands of times. It does not mean that 21 trillion total spending was misspent. And adds, Rydell noted that the entire Pentagon budget from 1789 to 2018 has only totaled 18 trillion, which is based on records from the Office of Management budget. So the total spending. <laughs> so I mean, this is one of those shocking categorical errors that demonstrates just a complete lack of even a categorical grasp of what's being dealt with. And that's concerning. Concerning. I mean, it's it's one thing to make a mistake. It's another thing to not even be in the area or the ballpark or the sport or neighboring country of where the actual answer lies. And one of the things, uh, like, I didn't see anybody talk about this, but it's funny on a philosophical level uh, that she is broadly decrying the waste, in this case in the Pentagon, calling it, you know, wasted spent 21 trillion dollars. She's decrying that waste and saying that it would have been better spent, you know, at DHHS or CMS or wherever they're going to, which, whichever government agency is going to be spending this money, how much are they going to waste out of that 21 trillion that would have been spent or the 32 trillion that would have been spent? What percentage of that would have been waste? And this is definitely the thing that occurred to me and that is of primary concern having worked with these organizations. I've worked with DHHS, DHHS a million times uh, with Social Security. The amount of waste, like there are peppered in this some fantastic people who are excellent to work with and do an excellent job. So not decrying them in any way. But there's also a tremendous amount of people who are terrible at the jobs, the structures of it, because it doesn't have that context of having to survive. It doesn't have that. They get their money by force, <laughs> by federal government and, you know, obviously the, the state and county analogs. But there's a tremendous amount of waste in this. And this is one of the big concerns about just raising and raising and raising taxes is that there's so much less accountability when you're just handing your money over to that faceless whatever who's going to do whatever they're going to do with your particular with your tax dollars that was a big concern for me at a certain point it's like when i was growing up it's just like okay yeah we'll give them money give them money whatever's coming out is coming out and they're going to spend it on feeding the poor so great let's do that but you know if they could do it slightly more efficiently and i save 50 bucks a month <laughs> You know, in taxes, rather than them getting some extra, extra napkins or one of the employees not getting to sit on the phone for an extra 30 minutes a day or whatever else it is. Like, it's a concern to just be giving that sort of a thing up and say, here, do whatever you're going to do with it. And let's keep doing that. And let's keep ratcheting up the proportion of whatever the, the tax base is going to be. What's that being used for? So, but again, this is it's a shocking misunderstanding of all of the philosophical financial accounting. Everything underpinning the ideas related to this topic, it's a shocking misfire. It's a shocking lack of a handle on a constellation of concepts that are indelible to being able to make big decisions. Uh, so... I just, like, this is depressing, honestly. So hopefully she, she used this as a learning... <laughs> 
learning exercise and she makes sure to brush up and understand kind of the basics of whatever things she's trying to talk about at least. And this is the big thing. This is the big thing is that it's it's the absolute certainty that she has in whatever ideological position she has taken like Medicare for All without having any concept or even an interest in understanding the finer details about that idea. That's what's incredibly bothersome and that's what seems to be kind of a the mantra of this generation where it's no I'm absolutely certain and I have no information no ability to argue my points but I'm absolutely certain that this is the case and this is what we need to do that is just a well tilled and fertilized <laughs> garden bed of, <laughs> of burgeoning disaster I don't I don't garden I have no idea if any of that made sense but <laughs> I just, it really scares me. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about the Vox article so we can get another perspective here to see if I'm just completely off base in this. Okay, so here's the Vox article. It's by, um, it's titled, The 21 Trillion Pentagon Accounting Error That Can't Pay for Medicare, Medicare for All Explained. So it's not even critical of... <laughs> Not, that headline isn't critical at all of her having made this, this statement. It's explicitly just saying, oh no, this is neutral, I'm just explaining this. Okay, U.S. military budget is such a bloated monstrosity that it contains accounting errors that could finance two-thirds of the cost of government-run single-payer health insurance system. All Americans could visit an unlimited array of doctors at no out-of-pocket costs. At least that's a notion spreading on left-wing Twitter, endorsed and amplified by newly elected Rep. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, one of Democrats' biggest 2018 sensations, and an undeniable mass at the fine art of staying in the public eye. Okay. Unfortunately, it's not Trump. Yeah. Spread like a game of telephone from a Nation article. Yeah. Pentagon's accounting errors are genuinely enormous, but they're also just accounting errors. They don't represent actual money that can be spent on something else. Let's understand fly around on Twitter all the time. Like, this is, we're deep into this now, and it's just like, oh, this is just a, this is a little misunderstanding. It's not a, just a, a shocking, seismic lack of understanding about the th job that this person is now doing for this country for $176,000 a year. And it's just like, everybody misunderstands things. Oh no, but this particular flub is telling about progressive frustration over the double standard on military versus non-military spending and is also the fraught state of play regarding the push for a Medicare for All program. Proponents of this vision have the political wind at their backs and continue to deploy the idea effectively to win intra-party arguments without really making any headway on the core obstacles to writing a Medicaid for All bill that could become law. That said, to the extent that political power rather than concrete legislation is the goal, that's probably for the best. All right, this is so tepidly critical. It's, it's shocking. The underlying article by Dave Lind Lindorf in The Nation that kicked off this this off is an investigative report into the Defense Department's accounting practices. Great place to start. Yeah, let's see the accounting practices. Of course, the Pentagon, so who knows? It's like studying the CIA's accounting practices. But sure, I, I'm definitely get rid of the waste. 100% okay with that. But it has to go to everywhere. You know, not just the Pentagon, but DHHS and Social Security. Let's, let's do that. And one thing that they're... Like, I have to work with Social Security... Not Social Security judges, but Office of Hearing Operations operations judges, ALJs, um, and they are much better. That's one thing. There's such a huge backlog. It was taking 18 to 21 months to get a hearing for a social security case. And now the judges that I've been working with recently, like they are just on point and so efficient. There are particular judges that are just excellent to work with, you know, win or lose. They're just excellent to work with. So I definitely think social security is, is heading in a better direction, but they really need to work on the, on where they process the payments. They need to work on that, getting those things efficient because those are just numbers. It should be straightforward and you should be able to do that. I had one client who won who was waiting a year and a half before it actually got processed. That person was entitled to those finances and it should have been just like they send the decision check it off and say, okay, here you go. You know, it should be very straightforward, but it took forever to get that. And he kept calling me over and over again. And it was a whole thing. Additionally, when it comes to like the local social security offices, those are horrendous. Trying to get to talk to somebody who can actually make a decision, trying to get people who know answers to questions, especially complex questions. It's ridiculous. It's so difficult to get any kind of a real answer on those kinds of things. And a lot of them don't even know the answers and they just come up with something on the spot. You know, obviously, I know the an I've read the statutes. I know what the correct answer is in most cases. And when I go down there and they don't know what the correct answer is, it's just it's infuriating, especially when it comes to big questions. Oh, wow. I'm just ranting about that now. So I, I'm 100% behind trying to get rid of 
inefficiency in government, 100% behind that. Lindorf reveals that the Pentagon accounting is quite weak, that the department keeps flunking outside audits, that funds are shifted between accounts without proper oversight, and that overall documentation of what's actually happened with the Pentagon's vast budget is extremely poor. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, American military is very expensive, sure. It's already being spent in the healthcare sector. Medicare for all would cost upward of 30 trillion over a decade because the federal government would be taking financial responsibility for an enormous cost center. Yeah, and like I said, I work with DHHS, or I used to at least, all the time, and there's a tremendous amount of waste, and that's just people doing jobs, you know? It's... Just think of any person, you or any person you know, any co-worker, and how much time they waste, especially when it's on something that they're not super passionate about. This isn't their life dream or anything. They're just getting a paycheck. Imagine how much waste goes on when it comes to that sort of a thing. So just funneling money, more money, to DHHS without having the slightest idea about how any of it works or how to do it better. or And not only that, but making it just in one fell swoop take over the entire medical system. <laughs> It's like, come on, you don't know what you're talking about, so just slow the hell down. Oh, this is what I was looking for. So misunderstandings fly around on Twitter all the time, and AOC's level of public knowledge is pretty typical for a member of Congress. <laughs> I mean, what kind of a situation are we in where we're saying that, yeah, that was really dumb, but it's just par for the course for our members of Congress. Like, that is really bad. But this particular flub is telling about progressive frustration on the double standard, and again, that's apologizing for it, so whatever. I... just a bunch of nonsense. And that's, that's another thing, is that I, when... She had another flub where he talked to, she talked about the, the chambers of... <laughs> of government. And that one struck me as worse than people made it out to be. You know, a lot of the follow-up was, nah, she misspoke and said chambers instead of branches. No, I mean, it's much, because she misnamed them also, but it wasn't just that. It was the fact that she mentioned it, realized she was saying the wrong thing, went to correct herself, and in correcting herself, said the next wrong thing about an extremely basic structure of government that she is now a part of. Like, that, it, it's mind-boggling, but this is, is so much categorically worse because it's it's just basic like you should have been able to logically put that together instantly it shouldn't have been something that you had to sit around and think about is that these are accounting errors so this could be i mean they put it in dollar terms to make it seem oh my god it's so crazy but in half a second of thought you should have been able to say well i mean when you talk about it, it's an accounting error so it could be back and forth it could be regressive it could be all sorts of crazy stuff it could be adding money when there wasn't really money it could be <laughs> not adding money when there was it, it could be all sorts of crazy stuff and I'm just taking I saw a number I'm using that number against another number that I know and then using that to try to galvanize my political base and and say this thing that I ideologically wed to and said this is the absolute answer even though I know nothing about this area I come on and now she's she's doing all this work for the entire country okay um just shocked and dismayed and hopefully like i said this is this is somebody who got elected in a heavy i think it was like plus 30 democrats or something like that so it's heavy democratic area there was no way that a democrat wasn't going to be there she'd be the long-term incumbent so i just i'm hoping you know this these are things you know you throw out a couple of gaffes you get seasoned and then you stop saying really stupid things and you at least have a basic understanding of what you're talking about before you start talking about it. So we'll see. We'll see if that happens. But she is way too certain about whatever views she espouses at this point relative to the amount of knowledge or ability to think about things uh, that she is demonstrating at this. So there's just a disconnect between those things. And that's my primary problem with the modern United States. So, I mean, modern, I don't know if other countries are better about this, but it's that fact of being so certain there's one thing about religion, being so certain when you do not have reason to be, and something so complex that it's absolutely ridiculous that you would say that you're certain about this thing. So whatever, that's that's this one, and that's that. I have to I have to lab this because I I'm definitely incensed and outraged <laughs> at all the nonsense. So I have to lab it to make sure that bring myself back to the level. So labbing um, number one limitations, and limitations are about my personal educational pedigree and whatever other contextual things might. Might be inhibiting my ability to to address these topics so my limitations i don't have you know, i haven't worked at dhhs i've worked with them i don't have any expert knowledge on the costs of medicare for all uh, and this it's not really about that uh, i don't have any expert knowledge in the particular 
their accounting errors and how they were calculated and how much it relates to total budget versus whatever else. I'm not an accountant. I, <laughs> I didn't study accounting. Uh, I didn't study the Pentagon. I didn't even read the Source Nation article that's supposed to be going over this. But of course, the Nation article is from a rather left-wing source from what I, what I know. So I don't know how accurate it is. And I don't know if they specifically... Because they could have just counted the accounting errors rather than making it a dollar figure. Uh, which, like I said, I'm sure they were doing that specifically for the inflammatory nature of getting to say that there were $21 trillion. And that's another thing, is that... I'm supposed to be labbing. I'm supposed to be hard on myself right now. But I have to say, that's another thing, is that... Now, this tweet went out. Somebody saw it. You know, how many thousand... I think I got 40,000 hearts, uh, you know, saves or whatever it is. So... 40,000 people really liked it, and another however many tens of thousands of people just saw it, period, and didn't say anything that came thereafter. So now they'll go around and start spouting, well, uh, the Pentagon wasted $21 trillion. They wasted $21 trillion. That could pay for free education. And they have no idea that, it, that this has nothing to do with just, they just wasted money. So what are you supposed to do with that? There's all this talk about fake news on Facebook and, and Twitter and their fake news and <laughs> all this other stuff. But that's as fake as news gets. You know, that's as misstated and wrong as news can possibly get. And there are thousands of people now that are likely to go out there and just start spouting this off when they get into to a conversation with somebody who's even remotely, you know, center left. So it's, that's kind of a shocking, I think Twitter was the worst thing to happen to freaking humanity. And I really wish we could go back, get rid of Twitter and just stick to, you know, it's one thing on a Facebook post. It's another thing on Twitter where it's all about that instant thing. Instant, instant, instant. Instantly see this, instantly respond, instantly move on to the next thing. So superficial. I was talking about my limitations. So I didn't take a, a tremendous amount of time to make sure that I, I I've researched all this stuff. I read these articles and I, I thought personally about these things philosophically and, and logically. And that's how I'm responding to that. Like I said, I don't know all the particular accounting errors that were made, so I can't speak to that. So I've got some limitations. When it comes to the, the anchor or the A, the weight of the anchor that's on my confidence in the propositions that I've levied during this episode. I mean, it's not very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> the anchor's not going to be weighing down on my confidence uh, too much because this is, she's exhibited a pattern, a clear pattern of this lack of understanding and lack of just basic knowledge about basic things that she's going to have to be addressing. And that's really concerning. So it's not likely that this is just a one-off uh, that she missed this. And it's really basic. Even in her tweet, she says Pentagon accounting errors. You know, you wrote that. You, so you understand that it's about accounting errors. It's not about just a, this was wasted money that they spent on beer or something. Something like that. This is these are accounting errors. So it's about the lack of accountability or the lack of efficiency or the poor record keeping or whatever else. It's about that. It's not about wasted money. So the fact that she made that connection instantly without thinking about it, even though she threw that into her into her tweet, that is tremendously concerning. So the anchor is not particularly heavy in this one. Being able to call out this tweet isn't a particularly complex issue either. It's it's more about the logical connections between things and being able able to see that something's one thing versus another thing. So I don't know, 400 pounds. <laughs> we'll just do that because I, I'm definitely biased against somebody who's been exhibiting this complete just ideologue and certainty about topics when they have no understanding to back it up and no, they just spout off generic facts to use in support of whatever their proposition is. So I definitely, um, that's why it gets to 400 because uh, I have just a general, I don't want this person to keep flopping around and throwing out complete nonsense just like get i don't know do a, a remedial course on governance and then come out and say whatever you want to say but stop with it i'm so absolutely certain about we need this thing without having any understanding of the things around it so bias that segues into my bias what kind of bias do i have again it's the bias that i talked about that i'm definitely feeling more hostile <laughs> towards people who want to give government more money and uh, just create programs, uh, vague programs that they say, oh, well, no, we need Medicare for all rather than this specific program, you know, like uh, one program I like, and even though it's, it has a whole bunch of inefficiencies and all that is CFC. I've seen that be extremely helpful to people who desperately need that kind of service. And it it's the kind of service. And if you don't know, uh, uh, CFC, it's a whole bunch of stuff that you can get from it. But uh, the primary, the big one is 
comes under uh, personal assistance services and you can get that with CFC or CPAS but it's included in CFC and it's it's personal assistance for people who have disabilities that prevent them from doing activities of daily living so when you get to somebody in the house who can help you with those activities you know things like walking and dressing and bathing and all that sort of stuff it can drastically improve your quality of life like it costs for sure but I think it has a tremendous amount of value and it's something that often creates um, um, jobs for people who wouldn't otherwise have jobs it, it'll in some cases be like a family member or something like that who has certification who gets to do this kind of a job for a family member and gets paid by the state or the federal government or the state so I really like that program so they can't all be they're not all bad or anything like that so my bias it's definitely I've definitely been just so annoyed with everything on the on the far left lately and all the Trump derangement syndrome and all the SJW nonsense and so that could create definitely a bias against her in particular or any new Democrat who is running on a progressive agenda who wants to talk about all these big changes they want to make without knowing anything about any detail about any of it so that could be a bias uh, anyway so so that's that's those are my thoughts on her and this stuff and what's going on. Just I feel dejected. I feel very unhappy. I was hoping that we'd get some moderate Democrats who were very bright and able to kind of redirect the the conversation in the country so that we can balance out against just get rid of government and libertarianism. I was hoping they'd be able to balance that out and we'd just get some some good ideas flowing again, but this doesn't seem like it. I love how all of them now there's like no more abolish ice talk after the midterms <laughs> it's just like that's gone now like it was what they ran on just get rid of ice get rid of them they're all evil and abolish it open borders and then right after the midterms it's like oh well you yeah. Never mind, they're not that bad. Don't worry about it. God, this crazy nonsense. I hate politics. Anyway, that's that. Thanks. 